watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Hey, brothers and sisters, wherever you're connected, this is um, your favorite program. This is your season uh, with your favorite host, Reverend Mike Abane. Um, I'm happy and excited to be here again. I'm, I'm so delighted to be here. Um, and my purpose here today is just to encourage somebody, somebody that I've been down for long, somebody that um, things are not moving the way you wanted them to be. Yeah, I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to tell you that um, it's, it's, it's an error for you to give up now. It's, it's, giving up is not an option. Hallelujah. Giving up is not an option. Yeah, you have prayed. You have, you have gone to so many people to look for solutions. But that's why we organize this program. This is your season for you. Yeah, it's time. It's time. It's God's time. God's time is working for you now. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you, Lord, for a program like this one to change life, to change destinies, to turn our community around. Lord, speak through us and encourage somebody. Revive your dream of somebody there. I, I, you, are, you are listening to me now. Your dream is about to be revived by the Holy Ghost. Let your name, Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. One thing I wanted to know about life, it is not the very wise that become the best in the society. It is not the very rich that become the best in the society. It is not how beautiful you are that makes you become best. In fact, I've seen a lot of beautiful ladies, but they are nowhere to be found. They are commoners in their life. So it is not how beautiful or the family you are coming from that determine your outcome in life. No. That's why I love this verse. That's if it's, if, if, I love it so much. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. He said, I've seen something else under the sun. He said, the race is not for the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the land. Hallelujah. He said, but time and chance happened to them all. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. You see, now, what is that verse? What is this saying? It is saying, not the wise. It's not the best. So relax. Hallelujah. You tell yourself, oh, I'm coming from the, from the worst family. My marriage is, is, is worst. Uh, my, my sickness. No, let me tell you something about life. Any condition you find yourself, you will always meet somebody that is worse than you or better than you. It doesn't matter how, how genuine you are. You will meet somebody in life that is more than you. Relax. So there's nothing for you to relax. It's not yet time for you to give up. No. It's not yet time for you to give up. Because there is a time. The Bible says there is a time. Timing is a process. It means your calling and your manifestation is for a season. It is locked up in a process. Right now you are down. You don't know tomorrow you might be up. What if you give up now? Are you miss tomorrow? Let me tell you, don't allow today to justify your tomorrow. Your tomorrow might be better. Your tomorrow, in fact, it not might be better. It will be better. Because the Bible says what? If, if that said that today is better than yesterday, that today is worse than yesterday, it said that inquired not well. No. It means you don't, you don't know what is happening because the Bible says God moves from glory to glory. In the process of time, he brings his manifest glory in your life. Therefore, each day, God is doing something in your life. Under the ground, at the back end, you might not see it, but God is working something at the back end. Things may be rough, going up and down. God is working something at the back end. Now, I want to give you some reasons why you should not give up. I want to give you some reasons you should go with it that will motivate to keep you on the race, keep you on whatever you are doing, whatever you want to accomplish. I want to give you some reasons why you should not give up. The first one, number one, don't give up. Why? Because God is not yet finished with you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thought I think towards you. Now, I know the thought. That is God speaking. It's not you. It's not your family. 
It's not people that are calling you names. No, it's not them. God says what? He says, I, God, I know the thought and plan I have for you. Say the Lord. It's a thought of peace. Yeah. And not of evil. To give you an expected. Okay. Now, you are experiencing chaos now. And you're asking yourself, God, is it the plan of God in my life? It's not the plan of God because God said my plan is peace. So if you're not experiencing peace, it means God's plan is still about to be accomplished in your life. So why give up? Don't give up. Hallelujah. Not of evil. You may be experiencing evil. Things are wrong. When no matter you've prayed everywhere, things are not working. God is telling you to bring you to an experience. See, God is focusing on your end rather, rather than your beginning. Hallelujah. Are you excited? God is focusing how you end this, this, this race. What is it that if you gain everything and then at the end, you are useless? At the end, everything collapses? No. Even the devil that is working against you, your enemies, God is using them as a tool to bring you to that expected end. Say with me, God is not yet finished with me. You are a project. It's time. God will bring... See, God never lies. He will cause it to come to pass. Number two, why you should not give up? Why you should not give up is because you are the promised seed. Romans 9, 6 to 9. Let me read Romans 9, 6 to 9. Let me tell you something about God's promised seed. Roman, Romans 9, 6 to 9. Hallelujah. He said, not as though the word of God had taken no effect. So God is telling you, not as though his promises has not come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. No. Not as though God is sleeping. The Bible says, He that keepeth Israel never sleep nor slumber. God never sleeps. So, for they are not all easy, which are of Israel. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. He said, But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 8. That is it. They which are of the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Remember, mark that. But the children of the promise are counted for the promise. The children of the promise are counted for the manifestation. The seed there is talking about God's manifestation in your life. Verse 9. Then we'll, let's read verse 9 and then I'll explain to you what, what that means. Say, so for this is a word of promise. At this time will I come and say that we have a son. Let me tell you. When you read the Bible, there is a law and there is a promise. A lot of people don't understand how this operates. The law is, is you have to do something for you to get, a, to get, to get the, the effect or the blessing of the law. But the promise, a promise is God's will, God's grace manifested in you without you doing anything. Before Jesus Christ came, all of us were living on God's law. Therefore, if you do something, if you sow something good, you reap good. If you sow bad, you reap bad. But when Jesus Christ came, the Bible said, I came in the volume of the book to fulfill the law. That the promise might be given to you by grace, not of works. So now Jesus came and fulfilled the law that God may not give him the promise. God may bring, accomplish that promise in your life. So what is he saying? It is saying that whatever God has promised in your life is not how holy you are for God to accomplish. Let me ask you something. When, you get, when, when God came to your life to bring you to him, did you do anything? Did you do anything for God to give you salvation? Did you do anything for God to send his son to die for you? He did not do anything. So why do you think that for God to bring his promise in your life, you have to do something? Say with me, say, I'm the promised seed of God. Wherever you are, open your mouth and speak this, because this is life. If you don't speak it, you will remain the same position that you are. It says, say with me, say, I'm God's promised seed. So whatever God, God has proclaimed concerning me will manifest. Nothing will stop me. Let me tell you, that way he said, God said, God told Sarah, at this time I will come and you will have a child. I don't know whatever has been darkened in your life. It has been delayed 25 years, 60 years, no child. No. I'm telling you at this time, God will manifest that glory. That's the reason you should not give up because God promised in your life. There, there's no strings attached. God will make it come to pass. Hallelujah. The material reason, reason why you should not give up is because God preserves you for your own good. Exodus 23, 29. God is preserving you for your own good. Exodus 23, 29. 
Let's read Exodus 23, 29. I want you to look it very well. He said, I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. God is speaking to the children of Israel as they left Egypt. They came to the promised land. Their enemies were there. They were still in the land. Now, some of you will say, God, take away this enemy from me. To kill my enemies. Kill my friends. Kill them. Kill anybody that is against me. Fire up the Holy Ghost. Kill them. Yeah. But hear what God says. I will not drive them out from before the in a year. God said, I will not drive them out. You are confused? Yeah. He said, I will not drive your enemies out. I will leave them there. Lest the land become desolate. You see God risen. And the beasts of the field multiply against thee. So God is telling you, give it some time. Because if I drive them out, the very people I'm driving them out, those are the very tools I will use to bless you. Remember what the Bible says? The Bible says, for the wealth of the Gentiles are back up for the righteous. So if God kills the Gentiles, kill a wicked one, where will you get, how will God transfer the wealth to you? God is not going to rain manna from heaven. It is still those enemies that are against you, against your promotion, against your business, that God will turn around, use them to bring his promise in your life. So don't give up. Why? Because your enemies around you are just there to promote you. Hallelujah. Somebody will be promoted right now. You are, I see you, pro, I see promotion coming to your life. I see your very enemies that are fighting you, giving your name, they should promote you. Hallelujah. Yeah, don't give up. Because God Keep those things there for a purpose. Number four reason why you should not give up. Because your affliction is working for you. A greater glory. Let's read 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for, for a moment, is a work for us a far more exceeding. Ah, li kabalado shadas. A far more what exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Weight. Hallelujah. I tell people that. Your affliction is in direct relationship to your glory. Let me rephrase it. The anointing of God that God has prepared for your life is in direct proportion to the problem, to the trouble you're going through. There are some of you, everything is against you. Nothing is working for you. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I always tell people that. For God to really manifest himself in your life, he has to empty you of anywhere that you will take glory. He has to empty you. Now, if you have money, you think that your money can do something. What God will do is that God will take away that money from you. If God really loves you, if God really wants to do something big in your life, he will take away that money. Maybe you have a father, you have a father, you have a mother that they preserve you. God will take them out from you. Do you know why? Because God wants you to solely depend on him. Because he wants his best, his fullness. He doesn't want anything to adulterate his power. He doesn't want you to look left and say, no. Now, see, so God wants a clear testimony from you. So that when things begin to happen, you will not say, eh, I don't know, maybe because the doctor, they, I went to the hospital, the doctor tried. No, that is why God will even tell the doctors, give up. The doctor will try, they will say, no, this case, this case, we cannot handle it. Then God will come in now. So that at the end of the day, you will have no reason but to tell God if God was not with me. You see, God wants to give you a kind of testimony that even when your enemies, they hear about it, their ears will prick, their, their, their body will scratch. That is the kind of testimony that God wants to give to you. So whatever you're going through now, I'm telling you, brothers, I'm telling you, sister, you're watching me anywhere you are. Don't give up. The Bible says, for your light affliction, he called it light affliction. Why? Because it is work, because the glory that shall be revealed, that shall be revealed in your life is worth more than more than what you're going through. That's what the Bible says. I will cause you to forget your past. How will God cause you to forget that pain? How will God cause you to forget that bad memory that you have? How will God cause you to forget that bad encounter that you had. If I, there is, oh, the only way God will do it is to bring a type of glory, a type of favor in your life. Then when you look at this favor,
for. You will not remember your past again. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a kind of way that there is a kind of door God opens for you. You will never know whether you have ever suffered in this world or not. Yeah, I'm telling you, your life affliction are for a moment. Hey, it is not. It is. It, it has a limitation. Look at Job. The Bible says God gave Satan a limitation. There was a limit. After that, God showed him himself, and Job was rich for his entire life. Your life affliction are for a moment. Brother, don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on your business. Don't give up on your job. Mm? You're about to give up. You've tried a lot of things. It's not working. You ask the same, what is happening? Don't give up. God is about to open a kind of door that you will never believe. It's for a moment. If you do not hear anything, hear this. It's for what? For a moment. It's not there forever. It's for a moment. Right now, this is your season. I believe right now, your time has come. God is bringing light to you. Hallelujah. If you receive, receive it, say I receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number five. You are equal to the task. Why? Why? Don't give a why. You are equal to the task. First Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians 10, 13. There are no temptation taking you by such as is common to man. But God is faithful. We will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. That you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what does it say? Every trouble you are going through is equal, you are equal to it. Yeah? See, God is not so wicked that he will bring something that will overcome you. The reason that trouble is coming to your life is that God's manifest glory is in your life to come out. See, there are a lot of things God has deposited inside you. Until you meet an action, until you meet a challenge, it will not come out. A lot of people have dwelt so much on the comfort zone. Comfort zone. Oh, my daddy, my father, my dear. See, I tell some people, it's time for you to move. It's just travel. It's time for you to travel. Move around your environment. That comfort zone, that is what is locking you up. The Bible says what? Well, there is no temptation, no evil. No darkness that will come to you that is a, that is more than what God has equipped you to be. So tell me, so tell me, anything you are going through right now, you are equipped to overcome. Say, I am an overcomer. Say as you mean it, I am an overcomer. You are equipped to overcome it. Hallelujah. That darkness, you are equipped by God. The Bible says, in any problem, he has made a way out. For you to escape it. You are equipped. You are able. Don't give up. You can overcome it. Don't give up. You can overcome it. You can overcome it. Let's go to number six. Why you should not give up? You should not give up because this is your season. Hallelujah. This is your season. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Say so to everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You see? There is a season for your manifestation. You see, let me tell you, if you are not your season, you are in the process. If you are not your season, you are your planting time. If you are not harvesting, you are planting. So don't don't cry when you are planting because you are planting to harvest. Your season will come. It may be your mate have gone ahead of you. That's the reason a lot of people get irritated about life. They also say, oh, what about my mate? What about my friend? What about all oh, my, my friends are married? I'm the only one remaining. Oh, see my friends that I started school with them. Everybody is having money, millions. See my friend that just came to America. Right? They just came to America, they are making it. See me. See, they, they are going back to, 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 to Africa. They are going back where, to, to, to their nation. But I cannot go back. Why? Because I'm not accomplished. See, every thought is going around you, asking yourself, why me? Everybody in his, his or her life will ask that question one day. Why me, Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a season. Say with me, there is a season. David went through scrutiny. God told David, I want, I'm, anointing, I'm anointing you to be a king. The very day that they anointed David, David was a king in the eyes of God. But was it, was it a manifestation? No. 
It took years. It took years. But in the very eyes of God, David was the king of Israel. God have rejected Saul. David was king. Hallelujah. Can you see the way God is saying? In the process of that, a season came. Everybody bowed and enthroned David as king. What about Joseph? Joseph saw a dream. That very time he saw that dream in the eyes of God, the parents and the brothers, they were, they were bowing to him. But in our own eyes, we do not see him. Even you. You were born a king, you were born a queen. The fact that it's not your season does not make me that it's not, a day will not come for your season. Your season is coming. Just like the, Joseph's season came after 13 years of waiting. They brought him from prison and enthroned him. Let me tell you, no matter where you are, when your season comes, you will, they will pull you out. <laughs> Hallelujah. When your season comes, they will fit you out. I don't care. You may be anywhere. You may, situation may be dark. When your season comes, God will fit you out. Don't give up. Because it's time, it's time for you. You are, you are planting that one day you will harvest. You cannot be planting and you are, you are praying to harvest at the same time. We are planting. The only thing is faith. Apply your faith that one day a door will open for you. Hallelujah. One day a door will open. You two will get married. Hallelujah. You two will have your millions. All these things you are looking for after, it will become a history. I'm telling you, it will be a history to you one day. Hallelujah. I see you rising. I see you coming up. I see you. I see God's glory. I see you. This is your season. Hallelujah. I see you coming up in the name of Jesus. Lastly, why, why is it that you should not give up? You are not of this world. Hallelujah. This world is not, you are not of this world. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. You are not of this world. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Hey, la cota la doza. He said we are who? Ambassadors. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's state be reconciled to God. Who is an ambassador? Ambassador is someone sent to a foreign country to represent the country that he's coming from. An ambassador does not entangle himself with the, with the country's politics. He comes to implement his own laws, his culture, his life. Because he knows that he comes to represent his people. So this, this world is not your... See, if you are born again, child of God, wherever you are, this world is not your world. I'm telling you, it is not your world. So why should you kill yourself? Oh, I'm not having a car. Oh, I'm not having the best car. I'm not having a house. Oh, I don't have my own child. Oh, I'm sick. This is not your world. You are just passing. Somebody that is passing does not come and plant and start planting houses, planting things. No. The Bible says, sow your seed in heaven. Let your eyes be on heavenly things because that is where your home is. That is where you came from. You broke yourself. So, so many things. Jesus told Martha and Mary, they came to Jesus. Martha was busy cooking, which is nice for you to cook food. I love eating food. Hallelujah. <laughs> Any man there you love to you I know you you, you love to you, you love food. And you not tell me Jesus did not like to eat. No, Jesus loved to eat. What Matter was doing was perfectly good. But Jesus said, Matter, Matter was so 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 irritated. Jesus, can you let my sister to come and help me? What is happening there? Oh. So bored with so many things. Oh, I will make it. Oh, what will happen in my life? Oh, my vision tomorrow. Oh God, this thing is happening. You are so stressed up until you are having mental disease. A lot of people in America suffer from mental disease. Do you know why? Because they are so stressed up about so many things. Jesus told Martha, you are worried about so many things. That is your problem. He said, Mary has chosen the best thing. Mary has chosen them. What is that Mary has chosen? Mary has chosen the kingdom of God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. Your priority in life as a child of God. Your priority in life as a servant of God. Your priority in life as a born again child of God. Is for you to seek the kingdom. 
It's for you to seek God's peace. It's for you to seek God's healing. It's for you as it is in heaven, for you to manifest it upon the earth. Each day you walk on the way, you see people on the street. You walk on the way, you see sick folds. You walk on the way, you see people that have not given their life. You see prostitutes. What are you thinking? That who is going to bring the kingdom to them? Oh, you are the one. We are the one. We, we are ambassadors. We came here to represent heaven. In heaven, there is no disease, there is no sickness, there is no, there is no confusion, there is no fighting, there is no strife. So we came here to bring the culture of heaven on earth. That is why you are here, brother. You are here to bring peace. You are here to bring harmony. You are here to bring healing. That should be your focus. The Bible says what? And then all these things shall be added. It's an added advantage. The house you're looking for is not your priority. It's supposed to be an added advantage to you. That is the reason I'm telling you don't give up because God has a very great plan for you. The plan of God in your life is bigger than what you even think. I'm telling you, it's bigger than what you think. The God's plan, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What God has kept to those who love him, eyes have not seen, is bigger than what you can ever think. That's what I'm telling you. You are in God's hand. You are in God's mind. The Bible says God has engraved you in the palm of his hands. Even the Bible says, can, can a suckling mother forget her baby? He said, no, it's impossible. He said, if, if a suckling mother forgets her baby, I, God, I will never forget you. I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. Each day I look at you, I watch over you. I want to pray for you that God will, God will help you. Father, I pray as many that are connected right, right now, a lot of them have, have given up their dream. Some of them are not even going to church again. They, they don't believe in you again. I pray for your strength in their life wherever they are. Come on, rise up right now in the name of Jesus. Pick up where you left. It's time for God's glory. It's time for God's manifestation. This is your season. Don't give up, brother. Don't give up, sister. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dream. To God, when God gave you that dream, God meant it. It will come to pass. It is for a time. The Bible says opportunity happened to them all. Your time will come. And maybe I'm talking to you now is your time. I speak God's power over your life. God's healing. God's deliverance. You are rising up. You are taking over. You are taking over that family. You are taking over that, that, that situation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you that you're not giving up in your life. God bless you that you're focusing on God's kingdom. And if you're not giving your life to Christ, see, everything works in Christ. Come on. Receive Jesus right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are now watching Amazing Fire.